Hello and welcome to the studio. In this film I am going to print the back uh, of my image, the hilly part of Wastwater, using a Mokolito block. So just to show you what I've got here, I have a um, block that I've prepared using carbon paper to transfer the image to the block and to draw with, and then bitumen roof paint. So just like the block that I've already printed, um, it's got those two things on it to uh, grab hold of the ink. So they're my waxy surfaces, if you like. The whole piece of timber has been coated in gum arabic and I've left it to dry. It's actually been dry for a few days now. So the first thing I need to do is to rinse the gum arabic off and then I'm going to start inking up. Before I do that, I just wanted to talk you through a couple of things to do with how you handle blocks when you're doing Mokolito. So once I have washed the gum arabic off, the block will be wet and you need the block to be wet for you to be able to ink it. If you wash off the gum arabic and let your block dry and ink it up, you'll just end up with a completely inked block. There needs to be dampness for uh, the grease to hang onto the ink and the not greasy part to reject the ink. And once you start printing, every time you ink up, the block needs to be damp to do the, the printing. If at the end of the printing, you still want to use the block, then it can dry, but you need to recoat it with the gum arabic and go through the process of letting that gum arabic dry, then washing it off and resetting it. Now, this is something I'm still learning, so I am still making mistakes with this, um, but the, the wet dry relationship, I do understand and know about, and believe me, this block has to be damp when it's inked or it's a disaster. So I'm going to go with the washing off and then I'm going to start inking. And after that, I'll be running a couple of proof prints. So I'm just using clean water and a sponge to get rid of that gum arabic. And I was intending this to be the only block that I printed for the background. But as with the first block, I thought, well, actually, if I can print one, I could print two. So I have ignored the advice I gave everybody in my previous film about not having two blocks on the same piece of wood for the same piece of work. And I also have a cheeky print on the back of this block, which I may or may not use later. So I have washed off my gum arabic and I'm just going to try and make sure that we've got a nice damp layer on there, but not too inky, uh, not too, too wet rather, because I don't want any um, pools of water. And I'm also checking, if you remember, when I marked this up, when I was painting the plate, I used... Um, a resist to mask out some masking fluid to mask out areas and I'm just noticing that there are a couple of little tiny bits of that on there so I'm just getting rid of those. Okay and my ink here is a mix of traditional oil-based ink and linseed oil. a while to get the ink to grip so there's always this kind of preparation period where it looks like nothing is happening which can be a little bit alarming especially if you're filming Starting to work now, that's good. 
So again, I'm going with the grain of the wood and I'm being quite firm and quite quick in my inking. And you can see that it's beginning to cling to the wood a little bit there. But I'll deal with that in a moment. For the moment, I'm more concerned with getting some ink down on these mountainous areas here. That's kind of the exciting part. So these bits here where I've got it clinging, it wouldn't really matter if it printed in the foreground. I mean, this is a print designed around it being quite loose in terms of the inking up. But what I can do is to try and get rid of a little bit of that. And I've got a cellulose sponge here and I've just wet that sponge and I'm just going to let that water go over the ink and it's just washing off. You see how it's coming off? It's just taking that excess ink off. You can see the little flakes of ink just pooling in the water. And I can help it off a little bit with the sponge as well. So you can see along the edge of my sponge there um, I've got these little flakes of ink which will off in the water anyway so but odd it doesn't look like it should work but it does okay so the first thing I'm going to do is to take a proof print Moccolito takes a while to get going so unlike my lino cuts where I can be pretty sure what result I'm going to get with Moccolito you kind of have to proof it and see how you're doing so I'm just bit too much water on that so I'm just going to take that off. So I'm going to do a proof print on my press just first of all on a dry piece of paper. So I'm not going to bother with registering it so I'll take my registration board out of the way. If you remember this is how I'm doing the registration I'm using the same registration points as the Japanese woodblock and it's simply a hole cut in a piece of timber. So let's try the dry paper first and see what we get. Now I said I was working on dry paper, it's never going to give you as sensitive a result as working with damp paper, but it's fine just to see what's happening. Ooh, okay, so here you can see the print is beginning to emerge and I'm, I'm liking this, this is really quite nice. Um, but I needed to put a little bit more ink on and to be a little bit more careful about what's going on down in this lower area. So just pop that to one side. And I'm going to make my um, block damp again. The other thing that I need to pay attention to is the sky area. I need to make sure that's cleaner as well. So while that is damp, I'm just going to set up the press again. So I'm taking my damp block here for inking up the next time. And again, I'm just making sure that I get rid of uh, wrong sponge. Let's just use that sponge. Uh, getting rid of the excess pools of water. 
So the next print I'm going to do is going to be onto damp paper. I have a misaligned print from my previous layer and I'm just going to use that to see exactly what's going on. So I've chosen this dark red because the um, hills up at Wastwater are this kind of lovely kind of dark currenty red um, and I really really like that so I'm thinking that probably the foreground I'm going to go into sort of golds and bronzy colours and then have this kind of very dark deep red in the background. The colours there are amazing. I went there after doing Print Fest, which is a wonderful print festival in Ulverston. Um, and I went up to Westwater, oh, some years ago, but I might go again. Print Fest is on this year, if you can make it to Ulverston in Cumbria in May. It is a wonderful print show. I thoroughly recommend it. And if you're interested in that, I will put a link in the description below. And you notice I keep turning this round, but always with the grain. And preferably without the piece of cotton from the non-slip mat. The other thing I should mention is that I haven't put any dryers into the ink and also you'll have noticed um, that I'm just handling the print and going straight into putting it back in the damp. There isn't wet ink on the print sufficient enough to cause any problems so um, I'm not using dryers because I don't need to. Okay let's try that. But before I do, I'm just going to see if I can get a little bit tidier in the sky. So I'm back to my cellulose sponge and I'm just going to put a little water on there just to make sure that I get rid of the red in the sky. That's better. And this time I will put it into the registration, so I'm going to insert it into that. And although the print I'm using here is, this is a trash print, you can see it's very pale. I've done, you can see maybe it's a bit pinky there, that's where I've tried lining up a Japanese woodblock with it. It's out of register, but it will do very nicely for me to do a proof on it. So I am putting it into the Kento uh, with the Kento corner on my right hand side, which is easier for me, but then I am turning the whole block around because it seems to hold the registration better if I put it Kento corner first into the etching press. It doesn't seem to move as readily if I do that. The other bonus of that is it makes a nice reveal to the press cam when I get to the other end. Okay, so if I hold that up, I can see that this is looking good now. This is really starting to come into focus and there is much more linear detail appearing on this print than on the previous print. So I'm really pleased with that. I think I would like it to be heavier inked. And of course, at the moment, it looks very kind of flat because the foreground hasn't got any work on it, but that's a good start. And if you look at these two 
side by side. Let's just move things out of the way a little bit here. And put that one beside that one. You can see how much more sensitive the damp um, print is to the print on the dry paper. I'm guessing a lot more linear detail and strength out of this print. So now that I am happy that it's starting to work fine, I can get on and work with a, a better print that's um, going to give me an even better result, hopefully. Move those out of the way. So here it is sitting in its registration. I'm just going to pop that out. And I am also going to pop this back into the plastic folder to keep that damp. So now I've had a chance to do a couple of proofs and I've worked out what I need to do. So a couple of things. If you remember, I used uh, masking fluid so that I could have these areas that weren't um, covered in bitumen. What I say about that is it's worked a treat in spite of staining the wood a bit blue. It's not acting as a resist or grabbing the ink, but it does tend to leave little bits of masking fluid unless you're really scrupulous about taking them off. And those do grab the ink. So if you try that, get rid of all of it before you start printing. The other thing that, that I have noticed is that I want a bit of ink build up in these areas here, even in the blank bits, to give it a bit of shadow. So I'm going to work on that with my inking up. I've also added yes more linseed oil to the ink to make it really, really runny. So you can see it's pretty drippy now. So I'm going to start paying attention to this area here where I want, up here I want clear sky but down here I want it to have more ink. So I'm just going to go a little bit slowly over that bit and deposit some ink. And I've also managed to deposit some in the sky, but I'm going to get rid of that. As I put, if I go slowly, it deposit ink, it deposits the ink. And then as I go over it again, it tends to lift away. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that then more ink down as needed. Okay, so now I think I've got enough on the block. I'm just going to go over that slowly and just put down that ink that I think it needs just about there. Okay, and now I've got too much ink here so I'm going to get rid of that. So my sponge and just going to drip a little in water there and just take out that ink that I don't want. So it's a really crazy method when you first start it looks like it's you know you do all sorts of crazy things but it, it does work. big dollop of water there which I didn't want so I'm just going to get rid of that as well. Take my damp print and pop that down into the Kento. And turn the board around.
there you can see, I'm just going to hold it in my hands because it's a bit inky down on the desk, you can see now how nicely that's printing. So I am going to carry on and print the rest of those and see how we get on and then I'm going to move on to maybe adding a bit more dark detail in the background and the colour woodblock print. So I hope you found this interesting and do subscribe if you'd like to see the rest of this series and I will join you in the studio again.